Hello people, another new day is here. We're at home and Britt the Builder is busy doing her thing. Man, she looks happy today. Ikea furniture makes me super happy. <laughs> I'm happy, I'm just not happy with what I'm doing. So if you haven't watched her vlog yet on her channel, and you haven't watched yesterday's vlog here on my channel, we got a gift certificate from for Ikea at Christmas time from our parents. And this is what we got with it. We got a desk that's gonna match that. It's a computer desk, so we can do our editing there. We can throw out the broken one in the office. Yeah, and get rid of the old one. It's very broken. And we're gonna have it out here. So we'll sort of fill in these two walls here. And then in springtime, we're putting the door in here, right? It's gonna be a, a double door that's going out to the back. This whole section here beside our kitchen is our pantry and right now just an extra storage room. So nothing much to see other than you know, typical pantry stuff and our storage room, which is actually uh, pretty neat right now. I don't know what happened. I went on this trip, I came back and this was all cleaned up. I have no idea what happened in here. Huh. So Britt got that all organized for us there. But what we're going to do is we're gonna knock this whole section from there to there out. So it'll be open like this side over here. What's our living room and that? This will all be one open space, except for we're building a new pantry. It's gonna be right against this, right against the wall over here, right? Yeah, I think so. So somewhere like here to here, we're gonna have like a walk-in pantry and then the rest of this will all be wide open. And then our dining room will be in this area here where this room is. And this will be an open area there. Our computer editing desk will be over there. Exit to outside, we're building a nice big, about a 12 foot deck along the back of the house in the back. This wood stove will be uh, twisted and moved a little further that way so it's just facing straight out. And then we're gonna build a heat barrier protection in the back there. And that'll be over there. It's hard to explain it all, well, because we don't exactly know what we want yet, but what? we're oh. working on it, and that's what's going Come on there. On. What happened? Oh, they bagged things separately. It's IKEA. It's supposed to make you angry. So far, not as angry as that. That was a good first timer. Anyway, that's what we're doing right now. I'll show you this old desk in the office back here that that one's going to replace. We're also renovating this room back here too. This is the dog's room here right now. We've got room to play. And right now this is our editing office. We want this to be out in the open. So that old computer desk is being thrown out. It's old, it's falling apart. It's, it needs to go. Though I still kind of like it. Maybe I'll put it in the, in the man cave. I don't know. But this whole area is gonna be cleared out and this is actually going to be part of the bathroom. Because we have a bathroom in here. Okay, but the wall is right there. We're knocking out this wall, partly. And then it's going to extend out from maybe this rug here to there. So this part of the room is all going to be bathroom. There's gonna be a big walk-in shower there, uh, a sink, toilet, and a lot of, a lot of space. And then the wall will be here. There will be a big closet against it, against that wall there. And all of this space in here is all going to be bedroom for the master bedroom. So we got big plans, lots of plans. Not gonna be able to get any of them done anytime soon, but we're slowly getting there one step at a time. So we got our living room set up now, getting it this area set up. And then summertime will roll around and we'll want to be spending all our time outside. Right now we have our bedroom in here. I think it's safe to show you it right now. It's a little bit messy, but this is where what we're using for our master bedroom right now. Yes, we use two separate blankets because uh, <clears throat> I got tired of the blankets being ripped away from me every night. So eventually I just said, nope, enough of that. I'm having my own blanket. <laughs> So we have two separate blankets. Yep. And then we just mounted that TV up there last time I was home. 
we want to move this whole master master situation in there. And this is our guest room where our friends stay when they come over. This is going to turn into the baby nursery once we get around to that part of our life, which is hopefully soon. And then this will be the guest room. But that bed is going in the master bedroom, just saying. Diesel, what do you think of our plans? Tell the good people. Speaking to the mic. Diesel thinks that the guest room is his room right now. <laughs> Say something to the good people. Here, speak into the mic. Say something. Nothing? Nothing? Diesel, you okay? <laughs> they pause him. He's an old man, old man weasel. And it's back to work. No time for too much fun. Just a little bit of time for a little bit of fun. I gotta pick up a trailer, uh, a load of glass that came from Minnesota. But somebody else brought it up to the yard for me. And they left the tarps on it and everything. So all I gotta do is hook onto it and go. Just check to make sure that they tied it down properly and that it's good enough for me. That's pretty cool. That doesn't happen all the time. That load has taken us to Surrey, British Columbia, sort of like Greater Vancouver area, right by the coast. Usually it would take us two full days to get there, but I'm leaving today. I'm filming this part on Sunday, uh, and I got to be there for Wednesday morning, so I have all day tomorrow, all day Tuesday. But there's a snowstorm coming in from Alberta that I've got to drive through. It's in western Manitoba right now and Saskatchewan. So I'm hoping to get up to Mooseman, Saskatchewan tonight, somewhere around there. We're gonna hit the snowstorm, but we're gonna hit it later tonight. And then I'm hoping the worst of it will pass over us overnight. And then by 8 a.m. tomorrow in Mooseman, it's supposed to stop snowing. But here further east around where we live in Manitoba, it's still supposed to be snowing all day tomorrow. So we're trying to time it so that I can be stopped, parked, and sleeping as the brunt of the snowstorm passes over me, and then I can continue tomorrow with clear skies. Does that make sense? Trip planning isn't just about timing it, it's also about paying attention to the weather and avoiding any unnecessary bad weather. You don't have to drive through the snowstorm if you time it correctly. Oh, I just had to leave a, like a day early. It's, what, three o'clock right now? Sunday. If there was no storms whatsoever, I could have left tomorrow morning, like, you know, 7 a.m. So I lose an evening and afternoon at home, but I know that it'll be a lot easier to do it this way and a lot safer. Well, it's just me and you this trip, Diesel. Chevy stayed at home, just like old times, man. So here's my load today. Somebody else tarped it. So that's nice, I didn't have to do that in the cold weather. We're ready to go. Not a very big load this time, so that's good. So I'm just waiting for my e-log right now. I already did my pre-trip and everything, but uh, the thing is I forgot to start my e-log when I did that. So now I gotta wait for my e-log to click over for 15 minutes. There's another driver. So I have to show 15 minutes for my pre-trip, right? I already spent this, the time, but I forgot to start that thing. And they don't believe me if I tell them I did it, but I just didn't log it. Oh well. The snow is starting. Come down a little bit here. A little bit worried about the snow we're going to hit tonight, but like I was saying before, I'd rather go through a little bit tonight and avoid the big part of it overnight as I sleep than have to go through the whole big thing tomorrow morning because it's going to be snowing here tomorrow morning for sure. Trucking. Just turning on to the South Perimeter Highway here, westbound. You'll see a lot of ice pieces on my windshield yet. Those will disappear over time. What I've done is I've completely cooled down my windshield. I've put the heat to the floor 
inside the truck and open the windows a crack to suck the hot air out. So I'm here in my jacket and my toque, so it's freezing in here right now. But that was deliberate to get the windshield cold. Now I can roll up the windows a little bit further, almost all the way up, leave the heat on the floor so that the cab stays warm, and then all of the snow falling from the sky, instead of sticking and melting to the windshield, it'll just bounce off the windshield. On highway 100 west. So that's a little trick for you. Keep your windshield cold and the snow will just bounce off. But if you put the defrost on and you heat up the windshield, it's all gonna it's all gonna melt as soon as it touches the windshield, and then your wipers are gonna get all full of ice, and you won't be able to see where you're going. But the thing is, I have the floor heat on right now, but you still gotta leave your windows open a crack to suck out a little bit of hot air, so it stays a little cooler in your cab, but you can see where you're going. Does that make sense? Just stopped here at the Flying J in Headingley, west of Winnipeg. Just grab a coffee and uh, a little bit of food. And we're gonna keep on going. Keep on the trucking. We don't wanna get to Mooseman yet. So let's get at it. Mooseman's not gonna come to us. We gotta go to it. So many people here right now, and everybody's of course parked as close to the building as they can. I'm like, can you blame them? And uh, I had to park quite a ways away and walk across the parking lot. You notice very quickly when you don't put on long johns or aren't wearing lined pants in minus 20. Oh. We're all right, we got a warm coffee. At least all these bobtails off to the right, they're parking in the proper designated bobtail parking spots. I like it when they do that and don't take up full 75 foot spots that are meant for a full unit. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. You pull into a truck stop late at night, there's very few spots and like five to 10 of them are taken up by bobtails. Just the truck, no trailer. Oh, it grinds my gears. That's something that almost as bad as using your high beams on the highway. So the temperature is not supposed to be too bad tonight. Uh, it's supposed to go down to about minus 26, which is still bad. But seeing as last week we were down at minus 40 plus the wind chill, I'll be, I won't complain too much about minus 26. All right, all right. At least I don't feel like I could, you know, die at any second. Speaking of, look at this guy using his high beams right here. Look at him. Flash your high beams at him, he has no idea what you're trying to tell him. Oh well, oh well. Let's just get to BC. It'll be warmer in BC, I hope. My dad is in British Columbia right now delivering in Coquitlam. 554 kilometers on one. And uh, Coquitlam's sort of in the same general area as the Greater Vancouver area, Surrey and Langley and everything. And he says it's snowing like crazy there right now and it's pretty cold. Last week when we were there, it was plus 12. Sun shining, green grass. I hope that weather system leaves by the time we get there on Tuesday night. I think I'm gonna go park right at the customer if I can. I'll call ahead, let them know I'm coming, and see if there's parking maybe on their yard there or something nearby. So other than that, there's very little parking out there. That there 
is the lights of Mooseman, Saskatchewan. We made it. And it hasn't even been that snowy. It got a little bit hairy around, around Brandon, back in Manitoba, but it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. I've seen much, much worse. And we made it here no problem. Time is now about nine o'clock, and I'm pulling in for the night here. So we got here before the worst of it hit. So hopefully it'll pass over us and by morning time, it'll all be clear again. And hopefully we won't be snowed in. I'll try to park in a spot where uh, I think I won't need a tug out in the morning. This is that co-op truck stop with the Tim Hortons. I used to stop here all the time, but now, you know, I go into co-op to get coffee. <laughs> I don't drink Tim Hortons coffee that much anymore. I explained that before, that I, I just, I don't think it's that good. I think it's too weak. I don't know what they're thinking, but you know, in order for it to, to taste like coffee, I've always got to add an espresso shot or two in there. Maybe I'm just building up a tolerance. I, I don't know. I've heard a lot of people say that Tim Hortons coffee is weak, but what can you do? What can you do? Oh, there's a lot of trucks here already. Oh, great. I hope there will be a spot for me. If not, we might just make a spot. Oh yeah, there's room here. What am I talking about? Of course there's room. Lots of room. I don't even got to park off to the right here. I was thinking about it, but I think I'm going to go park with those guys over there. I'm going to park the wrong way, too. Watch me. Everyone's parking this way. <laughs> you're going to laugh because I'm different. I'm laughing because you're all the same. You're all facing this way. I'm going to face that way. There we go. Wonderful. Now I get a quiet night. Quiet, peaceful night. Beautiful. <sighs> tired. I'm tired. You know, I always sleep the best in the truck here. Whenever I'm at home, I don't sleep as good. I don't know why. That's because I'm just used to the truck. Diesel, how you doing in there? It's just me and you, man. It's like old times. So Chevy stayed at home with Britt and Frank, like I've been telling you. Uh, Frank is doing so good and recovering so well. And actually, next weekend is the weekend when we're doing our big donation with... Uh, uh, after that fundraiser, we, we uh, got Frank the help he needed, got a surgery done, and uh, we've figured out all that he needs for rehabilitation and we're gonna be doing a huge donation to a local shelter in Winnipeg next Saturday and I'm really looking forward to that. Britt's done all the legwork on that and taking care of everything. Uh, they were, we talked to them and they're very excited to work with us and to uh, you know, receive the generous donation. We're gonna be getting them like a pickup truck bed full of dog food and Brit's vehicle's all filled up with you know dog toys and uh, uh, play pens or dog pens, dog kennels and stuff, everything that they need for their foster homes for those dogs. And we'll be talking about that more obviously next weekend when it all goes down. Really looking forward to sharing all that with you. But I'm getting ready for bed now. I really like e-logs for this reason. All I gotta do is like boop, 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 boom. I used to have to sit here for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes after my day was done, do all my logs and everything, separate the papers. Oh, that was, that was the olden days. New days have arrived and we're on e-logs. And for me, I like them. A lot of guys were very grumpy about having to go into e-logs. I really don't understand why. Because if you're not breaking the law and if you're following the law, e-logs should make absolutely no difference. Unless if you're cheating. Well then yes, e-logs are definitely gonna make a difference for you. But. I noticed no difference. I went from paper logs onto e-logs. No difference. Because I was following the law before. That's a whole discussion for another time though. Thanks for watching today. I appreciate it. I, I'd also appreciate it if you'd subscribe. If you want to check out my wife's channel. 
It's down below in the description of this video. It's called Brit's Beat. There's a link there. You can find it there. Uh, life from her perspective. She's also covering a lot of the uh, a lot of Frankie's recovery there. If you're interested or curious about how his recovery is going, most of all of that is on her channel, Brit's Beat, and that's down below in the description. I'll see you guys right here tomorrow. It's going to be a trip across the prairies. I want to get past Calgary tomorrow. Maybe to that Petro Pass near Cochrane, Alberta. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? If you're not from around here, you're probably like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that one. Yeah, totally know that. Yeah. You'll just have to tune in. See you then.